And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Lowlands by CNR Partenheimer. Now, this game looks, when I first saw it from Zima Games, I thought, hey, this looks like an Uwe Rosenberg game. And in fact, this game is the first one, I think, in the Uwe Rosenberg collection, which says, this seal, which is on the box, signifies that Uwe Rosenberg recommends this game for fans of his work. Uwe Rosenberg himself studied this game and contributed during the development process. Very obvious when you play this game, it looks like, you know, Agricola and Caverna, and definitely feels like it's a game he would have designed. This is a two to four player game about you building in the lowlands here with the dikes, trying to build the dikes up so the sea does not come crashing in and ruin everything. It is not a cooperative game at all, although players can choose to cooperate to fight against the waves while they're building up their farms. Here's how it plays. This is the main player board, and there's going to be a lot of different things going on on that board, and then each player has their own personal board. Now on this board itself is where players are going to be placing buildings and their sheep. You'll see that there's some features on the board. Those affect some of the buildings, but the most important thing here is you have a pen of fences. Everyone's going to start with that with two sheep on it. You also have a little sideboard here where you'll be able to build more things that go onto your board. Now, players are going to be scoring points throughout this game in various ways. Some of those points are going to come from buildings. Some of those points are simply going to just come from money that you're going to gain over the course of the game. Gold coins are simply worth a point. But one of the two main ways you'll be scoring points over the game is bound by this tracker marker here, which is going to start here. You're going to get points at the end of the game for each sheep that you have. The value of those sheep is going to change based on how this marker moves. You're also going to get points for helping build the dike. As you build the dike, your marker is going to be moving on here, and you'll notice there's numbers underneath the different spots at the end of the game. That number times the top number here, which could be zero or could go as high as three, will also be added to your point total. There's a few other ways to get points, but that's the main ways. Now the game is going to follow a timeline here. There's a tracker marker here that's going to move up. It basically takes place in three rounds. And in each round, a couple things are going to happen. We're going to bring out some water cards here like this, and these water cards are going to be flipped over. Now the back of the water card shows one to three, and when you turn it over, you, you'll know that that number is going to be one to three, and that's going to add a certain number of water to the board. Now that water is waves that are crashing in, that are coming in, and what players are going to need to do is to build dikes that are going to block that water. Now at first the dikes you build are nice and big and they're going to easily block four water each, but as time goes by when you build the second level the dikes get shorter and when you go to the third level they'll get even shorter than that, blocking less water. And though these are pretty small cards that are shuffled in here, but there's also a lot of four through six cards in here. And you can take this six, there's only one six out of the game to make the game a little easier if you want. But there can, a lot of water can come quickly. So as the round progresses, you are slowly going to be revealing what these three cards are. This is an easy round, and you'll see here that two, one, and one, that's not a lot of water but that can change from game to game. What players are going to be doing during the main part of the game is they're going to be placing their three workers on the board. You have five different spots to place workers. You can even place the same worker in the same spot if you want to, but you got to pay a gold to do that. When you place a worker somewhere, the action that you're going to take is basically tied to the number on the worker. So for example, if I put the four worker down here, I'm going to be able to draw four cards. Although I have a little helper here, so that gives me an extra one. So I'll actually be able to draw five cards. When drawing cards, you can draw cards from these face up or off the top of the deck, but you got to draw face up first and they're not replaced till the end of your turn. And there's three main resources in the game, stone, brick, and wood. So it's not like the deck has a ton of differentiation in it, and you'll be able to pull these cards in your hand. These are cards that you'll be able to use to build buildings and help build the dike. Speaking of buildings, players will be able to place workers and build buildings or features. So there's going to be a certain number revealed. These are buildings that there's only one more than the number of players in the game. Those are end scoring buildings. And then there's two different types of buildings that affect sheep and affect 
the dike usually, and then these are features which don't count as buildings. When you want to build one of these buildings, you are simply going to have to put down a worker that has at least that many actions, pay the resource at the top, so you can see this one is one brick and one wood. At the end of the game, this is going to give me three victory points, and this also says after you build a building, you can, do, you can build the dike a little bit. Each of these buildings, when you get it, is going to be placed into your area somewhere. So maybe I'm going to put construction waste down here. Notice that the building itself has walls around it. These count as fences. So if you're building areas for sheep to go in, then the, these buildings can help. Some buildings have specific requirements that say they need to go in a specific spot. And some will affect, like this feature, which doesn't have a wall. Some will say, hey, for at the end of the game, for every pond that's showing, if you have three of them showing, you get seven points. If you have four of them showing, you'll get ten points. That's what that exclamation point means, is essentially the end of the game. You can also straight up build fences with a worker, placing a worker here. Uh, you can move a fence for each action you have, or build fences, adding new ones from your personal supply. So if I have three actions, maybe I can do that. You can never leave sheep unattended. They have to be completely penned in, and only one sheep can go into each spot at the end of a round. Now, when you build these, and when you build a building, whenever you build a building, you'll place one of your buildings on that building. You may reveal things here. Some of these are going to allow you to get extra things in between turns. So normally, you're just going to get one card every turn, draw a card. But if I reveal all this, I'll be drawing three cards. And I can also place or move one of my two helpers on these spots. And when I place helpers on these spots, they essentially give me more actions or let me do something cool. Like, for example, this action spot lets me buy or sell sheep from the sheep market, which is right here. You can only buy or sell from one row. So right now, the maximum number of sheep I could sell would be three, and the most I could buy would be two. The price is the price that it's currently on the board over here. And then I just sell them for gold. If I have a helper down on the board, though, I can sell or buy them for plus or minus one gold. The last action that you can take here is building the dike. This is a very important action. Now, when you build fences, you can use any resources you want. When you build buildings, you have specific buildings. When you build the dike, you can use any building that you want. There's going to be three cubes up here, one for each of the three resources. And these cubes are going to be moved along the track based on what you decide to build. So let's say I decide to build the dike. So I put four actions, and I spend four clay. I'll move this here four. At this point, the dike is being made of clay or bricks. Anyone else who wants to build the dike must also use clay until it's finished. Once it's finished, we'll add a piece to the board. Uh, and then the next piece of the dike must be either stone or wood. Once I start moving wood, for example, clay comes back, and then the next piece could be clay, etc. When I place these down, let's say I pay a four action person, play four clay, and move the marker four spots. I then can pick one other player. I must pick one other player. Uh, so let's say I'll say Judy, you. And then Judy, and there's no discussion allowed here, Judy can also play up to four clay and move the clay marker that. For each of me and Judy who moves it, we'll be able to move that many spaces on this track. There's many bonus spots on the track. When you get there, you'll get some sort of bonus. And if the person I pick helps at all, I will move an additional one on the track. So those are the different actions that players are going to be taking. They're going to be doing that basically twice, or two rounds of this. And then there's an in-between round phase that, uh, that will happen if you, for every two sheep you have. You'll have another sheep if there's room for that. The sheep market is reset on different rounds. Players will be able to draw cards. When these buildings are, are bought, more buildings will come out. There's some minor upkeep and things that will go on. However, at the end of that, there's going to be a reckoning up here. Did you block the water or not? If you didn't block the water, then each player is going to get these tokens. And these tokens are bad. Uh, you'll get these tokens, and at the end of the game, each one of these basically gets rid of one of your sheep. And you get tokens basically equal to the difference between you and the first place leader on building the dike. So if I'm 1 and 14, I'll take 13 of these tokens. That probably shouldn't or won't happen. On the, on the other hand, if the dike is complete and stops the water, then the first place and everyone else will get money, coins, equal to the difference between first and where you are and the last place token. Also, this is going to move either to the left or the, the left or the right 
depending on whether the dike failed or not. As the dike fails, helping the dike will get you more and more points. As the dike succeeds, that gets you fewer, but makes sheep more valuable. That's basically it. There's some other things in. Like I said, at the end of the game, there's going to be scoring and from the different buildings that will give you sorts of things. And, you know, as you build up, you can get a lot of points from sheep. You can get a lot of points from building the dike. Most points, winner of the game. Now, while there are a lot of bits in this game, it's really... It's not as hard to sort out as you might think. Now, there's a lot of sheep in this game. I mean, a lot of sheep. Look how many sheep there are. And yet, the game still comes with some three sheep tokens in case you have too many sheep. I have yet to play or see a game that needed these, but it's nice that they exist. The only component I really don't like are these guys. I don't like that the stickers... I wish the stickers were colored like with a white number on them or something, because the white sticker looks a little jarring on the workers. That's kind of a minor thing. The cards, are they're not great quality. You can see my game has seen a lot of play, right? And you can see the cards are already getting nicked up a lot, especially these are you being used. And there's also a lot of symbology. You are constantly going to be saying, what does this building do? And fortunately, there's a whole sheet of, you know, what do these buildings do that comes with the game, and you'll be able to look them up. Yeah, I, I kind of wish they were a little clear. Those are really my only negatives. I do like the board itself. I like how each player board has an alternative side. It doesn't change anything, but it just shows it raining. And in fact, each of the player boards in the game have a different setup of the background elements, which again is not a huge deal. These background elements don't come into play as much as you might think, but they do come into play. The whole thing looks really cool, and I really like the dike here. I like as the water moves across and it piles up, it looks like there's waves coming in, and then you're, you're trying to build the dike and cover it up. That's a really cool effect, I think. And there's also, each player has a, a card that clearly tells them what happens in every phase of the game. That's also very handy. I have to say, this game is extremely impressive. You know, I kind of went into it saying, ah, oh, look at that cover, look at it, another Agricola Caverna type style game, and you know, we have how many of these games do we need? But this one has an incredibly different feel to it. Now, I don't know that I like it as much as I like, for example, Caverna, but I like that this game feels so interactive. See, when we talk about interactivity in games, it often requires a kind of a take that element. Like, ah, I hit you, I hurt you, and oh, I stole this from you, and things like that. That's not what this game is about. This game is manipulating the building of that dam. So in the very first game of this I played, I was like, I'm going to be the person who builds the dam the highest and the strongest. That's going to be my thing. I don't care about sheep. So I went fully into that. So we're going in there and building it. I'm way ahead of the other players. The first round ends. I get a lot of coins because I'm way ahead of the last place character. I'm like, <laughs> and then I noticed that because I did so well there, we stopped the water and it moved over. And I thought if that moves over again, I'm not going to get any points for having built the dam. Instead, points are going to go to people who build sheep, which is what everyone else is doing. And I was like, all right, well, in round two, forget the dam. I'm going to just go and do something else. And that's what I did. I deliberately let the waters come in. Other players tried to fix it, but I was like, you guys handle that. And the water came crashing in. Great. Now the points go back to where I want them to be. But now the other players are very concerned because they have a lot of sheep and that dam needs to hold at the end. So now they're working on it in the third round. I'm working on it too because, hey, why not? I want those points. And that back and forth, you know, there's a little bit of randomness and how much water comes. But that randomness affects all players equally. So it's not like, oh, no, I got hit and you didn't. And that I find to make this game fascinating. There's even some buildings you can build where you can say, you know what? Let the waters come. I'm mostly protected here. I've seen a player fill every spot on her board and be like the sheep king. And I've, you know, there's, I've gone to entirely build up the whole dam route, which I'm not sure is the best strategy in this game. But that back and forth and the talking to their players, I'm extremely interested in what they're doing. How are they affecting the market, the sheep market? Are they selling their sheep? Are they, what material are they building? The only part of this game that I'm not like a fan of is that weird, it's like a weird in the game. When you build part of the, the Ford, and I, so I, I, I build a piece, and then I say, okay, Sally, you build. But the rules say I'm not allowed to talk or negotiate or anything. Fine. So I just randomly pick someone. How many cards does everyone have in their hand? I'm picking you. 
So you got to like not give away, like, please pick me. It's kind of weird, right? Because you're, you're trying not to communicate. And then I've been in a game or two where they said, well, how can we communicate earlier? And be like, I'm, uh, you know, or should we watch with other players? I almost wish that there was discussion allowed there because it seems like taking it out just adds a small tinge of oddness to that, that scenario. That's really the only thing in a negative that I would say other than that. I, I enjoyed this so much. Uh, I, I find it fascinating, the back and forth. It feel, it looks, when you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, yet another one of these type of games. But it, it feels refreshing and different. And that excites me. And it has that very thematic, you know, are we going to stop the waves, the ocean from coming in? And that's pretty cool. So very much recommend it for me. I like it a lot. Dice Tower Judgment approved.